So a lot's happened in the last week, mainly the arrival of Season 1's launch trailer showcasing some amazing new content to get hyped for in the first Descendant in just over a week's time. One of the main focuses in it though was the showing of Ultimate Freyna, meaning we're one step closer to having that full ulti squad. Now as a Freyna lover myself, and yep, don't make that weird, this news makes me want to hop back into a character and get ourselves fully prepared for her to drop. In this video we'll talk about what gear you'll be needing, what component set you'll require, and even the best place to farm her ideal reactor this week. If all that sounds good to you, stick around and let's get to it. So let's kick things off when it comes to the reactor farm and the most important thing you should be doing right now and that's going to be going into and looking out for her best in slot. Now to do for this one what you want to be doing is grabbing a toxic mechanics reactor. Now we will discuss the roles in a little bit just at the end because you do want one for mobbing as well as one for bossing uh, but ideally what you need is a toxic mechanic so you have a roll into toxic skill power boost and tech skill power boost as well. On top of that we also want to be able to grab our special rounds mounting as well uh, and ideally you want to be looking out for Secret Garden. Now Secret Garden is best in slot because of the unique ability that it does actually have on the skill and that means when you use a tech skill which every single one of her offensive abilities so not her defensive ones are going to be able to have a chance of being able to trigger this. What this does is that pest control gives you a 30% chance on triggering on your ability for a duration of five seconds and this is at base because I do need to be able to grab uh, duplicate copies to enhance this even further uh, but this gives you bonuses to your firearm attack as well as your skill power and it increases even further per stack that you do manage to get while this is all active. Uh, so the reason why you want to do that is obviously skill power is going to feed into your damage over time, it's going to feed into the base damage that's going to happen from your skills landing. Uh, so ideally you want this uh, and this will also go feed straight back into the gun as well because you will be doing even more firearm attack helping you just kind of whittle the, the armies basically down while they're right, right there in front of you while you're doing your damage over time. So Secret Garden is pretty much best in slot when it comes to this game. Uh, ideally you could also, if you do want to fancy something a little bit else, you could use the standard stuff. Uh, the only other one that you can currently farm though is going to be uh, Special Round, so Greg's Reverse Fate is probably going to be the next best in slot. And I've already got this one maxed out, so you can actually uh, use this in uh, plenty of dungeons. You can use this in void intercepts if you need to, but don't wait while waiting for your cooldown to come back, etc, etc. Uh, so Greg's Reverse Fate is actually a decent shout if you don't have Secret Garden. Uh, so, you know, you can go back and forth between the two depending on what you would prefer, but Secret Garden does help in your skills as well as your gun, whereas Greg's is just purely a damage output machine by itself. Now as for the reactor itself, obviously we've covered the optimization. now we've covered the skill power boost. What else are we looking for when it comes to the god rolls? Now the god rolls you're going to want, like I said already, you're going to want one for mobbing and you're going to want one for bossing. And basically the rolls kind of like change a little bit when it comes to this because for example, in your mobbing, you're going to want the extra uh, skill range. So as you can see on this one that I currently have, I'm not saying that this is uh, maxed out, but this is close to what I'm actually looking for. I'm essentially looking for a better roll into that tech skill power boost. Uh, but skill effect range is going to be huge for this. It, it boosts the, uh, the like the puddle that you can leave behind with your toxic skills. It affects like how many enemies that you can hit at the same time with all of your skills. So I highly recommend that you do grab a boost into that. And on top of that, you definitely want a power boost ratio as well. Well, so either a tech or toxic. I don't think there's really too much difference as far as I can tell between the two. Uh, so feel free to if you got if you get one to drop with toxic, if you get one to drop with tech, either one is just just as good here, and it's going to be boosting up the viability of your skills as well. Now while I don't currently have one from the current farm that is going on right now, what you can see is here the ideal one that you want for when it comes to bossing, and that is going to be a roll into power boost ratios with either toxic or tech again. Uh, this is going to improve the main base damage that your abilities are going to be doing, and you also want a roll into additional skill attack when attacking Colossus. Uh, you definitely want to get both of these gold if you can do, like I said, if you can get this into uh, the, the special rounds weapon that you will be using as well, even better. Uh, but uh, this one is just purely general rounds, this is just one I had kicking around but I am still looking to be able to grab one to help me out with that secret garden as well. The other one you could go for if you actually play this game co-op and you do have a coordinated team is if you do have a dedicated Luna in your team uh, you can actually go for crit damage. The reason why I wouldn't suggest going for crit damage before if you play solo or anything like if you don't have a Luna is because Freyna's base uh, crit uh, hit rate is only 5%. It's not very high at all whereas Luna gives you a nice like additive buff to this uh, which makes it actually more worthwhile uh, but being able to rely on that 5% is just not worth it and I 
would much rather have the consistent damage boost, which is going to be those power boost ratios, rather than being able to rely on a crit damage. On top of that, that power boost ratio does also feed into your crits as well. So even if you do manage to land one of those hits, uh, you still have something that's going to be feeding into it. And that's why I do think that the power boost ratios are actually going to be the better shout when it comes to uh, just maining into your Frainer. So we've talked about what we're looking for, so where are we actually going to farm these reactors out? Well, there is a perfect place right this second that is from the rotation that has currently happened. And what you want to do is go to your, uh, your main world zones. You want to go into Echo Swamp. On the left-hand side, we do have Muskeg Swamp. And so you're going to be teleporting here to your outpost. But the mission that we're going to be wanting to do is going to be the Tree of Truth. The reason why we want to do this one is because it does have a relatively short playtime, but it also has a high enemy density. So unlike the uh, Arky uh, motion sensor, which is a very simple mission to be able to do, uh, and all the enemies basically spawn in front of you, it takes so much time for waves to actually spawn in. So you're not going to be seeing, you're not going to be farming as often as you would, would do when it comes to the Tree of Truth. With this script mission, Though, what I would suggest is that you do swap over from public to private, head into uh, the outpost, go up to activate it, and then head left, activate the uh, the cores that are going to be happening. So activate them in the order of B, C, and then A. And then once you've managed to do that run, head over to this section, which you're going to be seeing on the screen right now. Uh, and this is going to be the best way to cover B and uh, B and C, if I remember right. And then A, you can just kind of swing around and just hit every now and then. And this will congregate all the enemies pretty much onto you. Uh, and then while you're doing this, this is the most efficient way that I've seen to be able to farm this location. And because of the density of the enemies, especially the ones that come with modifiers, which give, seem to give you a higher chance of being able to drop these kind of reactors that you're looking for, um, it just it gives you a good chance of being able to get some decent legendary reactors out of this. So I've I've, I've definitely seen upwards of around about six, and if not seven, uh, drop in a single run. And then once you've managed to complete this, once you've actually got the things uh, to be able to pop up out of the top, and it says destroy, what you want to do is press your escape button or be able to go into your main menu, abort the mission, and then go back to the exact same location and then start the mission once again. The reason why is because you will be wasting time grabbing the items and you will be dropping them back basically where this mission starts and there will be no more enemies it will essentially just give you the rewards that you can see uh, with the mission card itself and we're not necessarily too interested when it comes to those rewards if you are really interested in those rewards feel free to be able to do it but it will save you so much time it will increase the efficiency of your farm by just abandoning that mission going back to that start point and then just basically rinse and repeating until you manage to get the reactors that you're looking for so that's how you're going to be doing your reactor farming currently, especially for this week until we start seeing the new drops for next week. Um, so what else are we going to be needing to look out for? Well, like I said, we've already discussed the weapon. Secret Garden is pretty much the main one that you do want to farm into additional copies for. So duplicate that up as high as you can. There are two other things that I do think we can focus on when it comes to Ultimate Freighter, because even though we don't know what kind of uh, extra modules are going to drop, with the new uh, Void Intercept boss that's going to be coming, and we also don't know what uh, specific Transcendent module she's going to be bringing as well. Even though we do, we have a feeling potentially some of them could be quite useful, there are a couple of ones that we do already have in the game that are still very much, uh, pretty much widely accepted as pretty much quite useful. Um, so we're going to have a look at the external components first, and then we'll get into the uh, the build as well as the Transcendent mods that I do think are going to be worthwhile, especially starting off with. Uh, so external components, you definitely want to be rocking a slayer set now we do have access to a different one which we can get from uh, the uh, from the toxic void in set battle I can't remember it swamp walker that's the one um, you can get her dedicated set essentially like it's, it's, it's predetermined that it's, uh, this is what she should be using um, but personally I think the slayer is just much more consistent it's easy to be able to use it's easy to get off the ground you're able to pretty much just kind of like use this and you do have the slight downside of being able to have a 15% increase to your skill cost but you can kind of get around this with Freyna there are ways to be able to build into it so that it actually isn't a, an issue whatsoever in fact uh, Freyna combined with MP, uh, MP collector is one of the easiest ways to be able to get her MP back because of how many enemies she can affect with a single skill and um, so I do think that Slayer set is just the easier all-round kind of set to be able to rock with uh, with Freyna so you definitely want to be able to use this uh, being able to get that nice 26.1% increase to your skill power is going to feed into your damage over time it's going to feed into the main damage uh, that your abilities are going to be landing in the first place so yes it's pretty much best in slot as far as I'm concerned uh, so I, I would wouldn't really waste my time with the other ones because it kind of requires you to keep enemies alive but also to toxic at the same time it, it, it's weird I, I wouldn't recommend it whatsoever 
Now, if you are trying to be able to get yourself extra pieces for Slayer, these can all be farmed from the hard Pyromaniac. Uh, so make sure you go into those Void Inset battles, get, get a kill on that Pyromaniac, and then just see what drops, and then just basically rinse and repeat until you manage to get it. Now, in terms of other things that we can do, we can actually swap over into the modules. And this is where you're going to see my current build that I am focusing on with Freyner. Obviously, I will be transferring a lot of this over to Ultimate Freyner once I do have her unlocked. Uh, but essentially, what we are looking to maximize out is going to be range. We are maximizing skill power uh, and then just basically skill amount of power modifiers. That's going to increase the amount of damage over time, as well as all the damage that we're going to be dealing with uh, with all of her builds. Now, this video isn't a build video, so if you are looking for some kind of builds to be able to get kickstarted, Start off with Ultimate Freyner or even just General Freyner in this game. Now I recommend that you have a check of this video that will cover three builds that will exist in this game. One for general mobbing, one for co-op play and one for bossing or uh, colossus kind of fighting. And that would essentially do you quite well. Now, none of those are fully min-maxed or anything like that, so they will be quite good to transfer over into Ultimate Freyner, especially early days, and I do think that's probably what I'm going to start rocking myself. Uh, but there will be more build guides coming up in the future because I do plan to invest a lot of time and fully min-maxing out of my Freyner build because Freyner is very interesting. She's got a lot of good things going on with her kit, and uh, she, she's definitely one of my favorites when it comes to it. But in terms of like modules that you want to be focusing on, uh, obviously you can see all these, but I do think there are some transcendents that are definitely worth grabbing if you haven't already. The first one I would recommend is going to be Neurotoxin Synthesis. The reason why I suggest this one is because this gives you a massive increase to your damage over time with my, more, most of your abilities. So like you can see here, our Room Zero Trauma is currently sitting at 125.1% before we go into anything else that exists in this build. But if I took that off, you can see that this drops down all the way to 10%. Uh, so this is a huge increase to damage over time, and this just makes it so much easier to be able to use Freyna. Uh, it also gives you extra benefits of enemies that are being hit by that, uh, do less damage to you. Um, they also have less chance of being able to regen their own health, which only really kind of comes in with Colossi. Uh, but uh, overall, this is definitely probably one of the better transcendent modules as it currently exists. And then once we get to see the new selection that drops in just over a week's time, then we'll be able to make that judgment call about if there is anything that's better in that slot. The other one that I would recommend currently grabbing just to be able to mess about with, especially for mobbing side of things, is going to be Contagion. Now, Neurotoxin Synthesis I do think is a little bit better because it kind of takes on the mobbing side of things as well as the more stubborn enemies that do exist. But Contagion is still a fantastic mod to be able to use, and if you don't have access to Neurotoxin Synthesis, Feel free to be able to slot in Contagion instead, and this basically gives you like an AOE detonation kind of thing that then starts spreading the poison. So if you are looking for something that, because uh, Neurotoxin doesn't spread poison anymore, it just purely deals room zero trauma. If you are looking for something to filter into your guns, to filter into the rest of your build that specifically goes around poison, Contagion is the better of the two, and feel free to be able to slot that one in as well. And there we have it, that is my current checklist for Ultimate Freyna when she drops next week. Uh, it pretty much covers everything that you need ready to be able to slot in as soon as you actually manage to have her unlocked. So that's going to be your reactor, it's going to be your components, it's got your weaponry in there. It's got a couple of ideas for builds in there, but ideally I would recommend that you have a check out of a proper build video rather than just take what's currently in front of you. And overall, I'm really excited to be able to see her drop and see what other things and what goodies that she does bring to the table. But this is the part where I want to hear from yourselves. Are you excited for Season 1? Are you excited for Ultimate Freyner? And what do you think she's going to be bringing Transcendence mods-wise when she does actually drop with that update? Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video. And this is where I always say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on our next video.